Menstruation is a woman's monthly normal vaginal bleeding, often called the period. When a baby girl is born, her ovaries contain hundreds of thousands of follicles, which stay inactive until puberty begins. There isn't one right age for a girl to get her period. But most girls get their first period about two years after their breasts start to develop, when they're between age 10 and 15. But it's different in each and every person's. Every girl's body has its own schedule. Two structures in the brain, the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus, produce complex hormones that stimulate the ovaries to make female sex hormones that start and control the menstrual cycle. And it will continue till about age 51, usually lasting from 3 to 8 days. The menstrual cycle includes several phases. The first phase of the menstrual cycle begins on the first day of bleeding and lasts for about 14 days. In a normal menstrual cycle, the brain makes the hormone GnRH, which travels in the blood to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland then releases two hormones, follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH which travel in the bloodstream to the ovary. These hormones cause about 6 to 12 follicles to be awake and start to mature. As they are going to mature, they release the hormone estrogen, which increases over and peaks in about day 12, and cause the lining of the uterus, endometrium to begin to build up, it will become more thicker, and enriched with more blood vessels. Then one of those 6 to 12 follicles tends to grow a little faster, and becomes dominant. Then this dominant follicle moves to the edge of the ovary, to produce an egg. In fact, the woman's body prepares to get pregnant. On about day 14, the high amount of LH and FSH cause the egg to be released from the follicle. The high level of LH also causes a brief surge in testosterone, which increases sex drive, right at the most fertile time of the cycle. Once the egg is released, the follicle seals over and is called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum starts producing progesterone. This progesterone has a negative feedback effect on the GnRH to reduce it and keep its frequency in a normal range. It causes and decrease the levels of FSH and LH. Other follicles disintegrate in the next few days. After release, the egg enters the fallopian tube. Tiny hairs in the tube's lining help push it down a narrow passageway, towards the uterus. If the sperm cell can successfully meet an egg cell in the fallopian tube, the fertilization will take place in fallopian tube. If fertilization has occurred, the corpus luteum continues to produce progesterone, which prevents the endometrial lining from being shed. If the egg is not fertilized, it disintegrates after about 24 hours. Then the corpus luteum also disintegrates, which causes progesterone levels to drop and signals the endometrial lining to begin shedding after about 14 days. The menstrual blood is partly blood and partly tissue from inside the uterus. It passes out of the body through the vagina. The period comes again every 24 to 38 days, from the first day of one period to the first day of the next. Besides bleeding from the vagina, you may have abdominal or pelvic cramping pain, lower back pain, headache, fatigue, mood swings and irritability, food cravings, bloating and sore breast. One of the primary abnormality in PCOS is the abnormal release of GnRH. Instead of being released in a regular cyclic manner, for an unknown reason, it is released at a higher pulse frequency. This increased pulse frequency leads to an increase in LH over FSH. This lower FSH causes follicle, not maturing enough to become functional, and can't ovulate. If the follicle does not ovulate, 
a corpus luteum is not created, and without a corpus luteum, there is no surge in progesterone. The lack of progesterone leads to a higher pulse frequency, seen in PCOS. The follicles that don't ovulate are cysts that form on the ovary with PCOS. Multiple cysts on the ovary represent past failed follicular ovulation events and are characteristic of PCOS. Also, excessive LH levels stimulate the theca cells to produce higher amounts of male sex hormones, androgens, or testosterone, which leads to other PCOS symptoms like hirsutism, acne, menstrual irregularity, due to hormone imbalances, and infertility, because there is no ovulation. Insulin also plays a vital role in PCOS. It is released from the pancreas. Insulin can affect the theca cells of the ovary, and cause even more androgen release. The high amounts of androgen cause, decreased sensitivity to insulin and cause insulin resistance. With insulin resistance, more insulin is released from the pancreas, and causes even more androgens. The whole process is one big vicious cycle. This can lead to a condition called prediabetes or even diabetes. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a constellation of symptoms, rather than a disease. The cause or causes are not entirely understood. Having a healthy lifestyle, getting plenty of exercises, weight loss, good sleep. Also, discontinuing smoking are the foundations of PCOS treatment. There are also medical treatments available for polycystic ovary symptoms and should be given by a specialist under close supervision.